What's happening YouTube? So this is going to be a two-part series and today we'll be looking at the direct drive motor setup. The next video will look into the Bluetooth GT wheel that I've just built. So a while ago I came across a thread on hackoverday.io and it was a post about someone getting a midge servo motor running as a direct drive force feedback wheel. Yes, I know this isn't new by any means, but what was interesting is the project was running off a cheap and readily available AASD servo driver. It was using MMOS software and firmware, which even though it hasn't been updated since 2014, is still very relevant today and works with every game I've tried anyway. This is actually what the Simicube guys ran back in the day before Granity decided to create their own software and firmware. I instantly got interested in this project as I just built my motion simulator using the same drivers and they were a breeze to work with and install. The main issue was the post was in Chinese and through some Google translating I managed to make some sense of the guide and got ordering. It has now since been converted to English so it's a lot easier for everyone to understand. I ordered a 130ST M10010 which is a 10 Nm motor with a max torque reaching 25 Nm. I like to call this the medium midge I guess as it sits somewhere between the small and the big midge in specs. I bought it bundled with the AASD 30 amp driver that way I knew everything would just plug and play. Midge themselves actually use a different pinout I think for their encoder so if you happen to go midge you'll have to check the pinout. So let's get into the build. Okay so what we have here is the control board for the direct drive wheel. It runs MMOS firmware and um, connects to the MMOS software. It's an uh, STM32 F4 discovery board. Okay, um, I've got DB9 male and female connectors for Logitech pedals and shifters, and it's also got DB25 which connects to the servo driver for the motor. Now I'm going to cut the ends off these jumper cables, I'm going to solder them to the DB connectors, then I'm going to pull the pins out. Um, of this female end that I'm going to put them in a pin header like so and then we'll probably plug them in upside down here on the board. Now I also have just a two pin connector that's going to be for the e-stop so that'll just hang out the back and that'll just, yeah control the emergency stop button. Now I'll probably just get soldering the DB25 connectors first and then I'll work on the pin out for this later. So let's get soldering. Okay, so first we wanna cut the male ends off, strip the wires back, dip them in flux. You can tin them if you want, but I didn't find it necessary. Then you wanna remove the pins from the other end. It's a little tricky, once you get used to it, they come off pretty quick. Bend the little black tab back and they should just pop straight off. Next you want to familiarize yourself with this schematic. These are all the pins you're going to be needing to solder to. So print it out, have it handy, close by at all times. So I decided to just get all the pins I needed, pre-solder each pin. That way I can just get the wire later on and solder the wire straight to the soldered pins rather than doing it the other way around which would be putting the pins in the pin header and then trying to figure out which pin to solder the wires to so I found this way to be a little a little more straightforward I think for me whatever works for you So what you end up doing is you've got your wires coated in flux, your pins pre-soldered, just lay the wire on top of the soldered pin, put a bit of heat with soldering iron and it should just sink straight into that soldered pin. Nice and easy. And once you get the flow right, it will just flow along quite nicely. I had a few hiccups, a few stubborn wires, but that's expected. But everything went pretty smoothly.
Next you want to find your e-stop wire, cut the wire and you want to solder this two pin connector in between. This will run to your e-stop and when you hit your e-stop it will trigger this wire and stop all motor movement. So right now we're just going to cut, twist, solder, heat shrink and then move on to the next step. Okay, once you've got all your pins, your wires soldered to your pins on your DB connectors, you want to pass them through the top of the, the discovery board housing and work on your pin out. What I did, because the discovery board's upside down, I've actually mirrored the diagram that we looked at earlier, the schematic, and it just made it easier for my brain to handle <laughs> with which wire goes where, rather than trying to do it on the fly. Um, I triple check everything because the last thing you want to do is put it all together and have to pull it all apart and f trace down one dodgy wire that you've sort of misplaced. But luckily, I didn't have any of that. Once you've got all your pins in their right position and you're happy with everything, then you can go ahead and screw the DV connectors to the top. You could either opt for just putting nuts behind the bolts, but my holes were good enough. I found some nice south tappers that did the job and they're pretty secure. I'm happy with that. After that, you want to slide the board in. You should probably check all this before going ahead, but it should all work pretty, pretty smoothly. Slide the board into the housing, get your connectors, make sure they're around the right way and plug them into the back of the discovery board. Once you've got them nice and secured and you made sure no wires have pulled out, they're all the tabs are holding the pins correctly, then you can work on some cable management and get that top cover down and screw it up. Another option is to actually just wire the discovery board straight up to the supplied DB25 connector that comes with the motor and driver. So it's pretty much got everything you need. You just need uh, some 10 core wire and you're set to go. Okay, so now we just grab a normal extension cable. We don't want this, so. Uh, 
Um, Okay, so now you wire the mains power to the AASD. Um, so in Australia, you better want to check with your um, country codes. And <laughs> if you don't know anything about mains power, you should probably not do this. You'll seek the help of a professional. Um, so we want our active wire, which is brown, go to L1. neutral wire to L2 and then the earth goes down onto the body like so. Forward, you got V, U, and so on. Like so. Now, your encoder plugs into here from the motor, and this is your DU25, goes to your discovery board. And, okay, so now we have to change some settings in the servo driver. So power it on, we go to mode. Okay, we wanna go to PN. All right, now up and down changes the column, set moves it across, and holding it saves it or goes through to the, selects it. Um, so, the first thing we want to do is PNO2. Let's just check, it should be on zero. Alright. 
Now we want to go to PN03. We want to make sure it's on zero. Yep. PN51. Three thousand, right? Now this mode is only good for fifteen hundred RPM. So we're gonna set that to fifteen hundred. Okay, PN fifty three. We want this set to eighteen. Now we want PN 188. Set that to 1. Now we want 190. Make sure you set that to 0. Also to zero, one ninety eight. We want that on one hundred and twenty. So I think we better adjust this maybe if we want a bit more RPM later, but 120 RPM for the torque control speed limit is what we're going to start on. That's what they recommended on the thing I wrote. So, and that's pretty much it. Now we can plug it in, get the software onto the Discovery F4 board and see if it works. Now we got to clamp it down to the table because we don't know what's going to happen. And I have an e-stop, just a temporary one. It's going to be a normally open, and that'll plug into the. He stopped connected. Right, so now we're going to plug the motor in. So this is the motor power, the four pin. All right, if you have a look closely, there's numbers written on there. There's also numbers inside here. So just line them up, make sure they're in the right way so you don't damage anything. And Now the encoder wire, same sort of thing. There's numbers written on it. So line them up with the encoder plug. And one is nowhere to be seen.
a lot of straight in there. Okay, so a quick rundown. The encoder cable here plugs into here. Alright. Now then you have a DB25 cable and that's gonna go from here to here. So we'll plug them in now. Okay, so once you've finished assembling the discovery board, what you're going to need to do now is actually flash the MMOS firmware onto the board. So in order to do that, you're going to need a program called STM32 ST Link Utility. All the links will be in the description. You install this and basically the discovery board has the bonus of having a uh, an ST link built into the board, a programmer. So that is the mini USB side, and the micro USB side is the side that actually connects to your computer once you've uh, flashed it. So you want to plug in your mini USB, you want to run the STM32 link utility, you're going to want to connect to the target. Okay, everything should connect like so. Now, before we do anything, you want to do a full chip erase. OK, and then once that's done, we can then look at putting up the firmware. I'm sorry if you can hear my cat in the background. All right, so now we're going to want to program and verify. Put the path to the MMOS firmware hex file. All these links will be in the description. OK, now we're going to go start. It's going to flash. And done. Now you can disconnect from target. And we're going to plug in the micro USB side and open the MMOS software and see if we can get some connection. Righto, once you've got your micro USB in, I've actually found that I have to have the mini and the micro in at all times for some reason. So, not too sure what that's about. But um, we want to open the tool up. Okay, now if everything's good, you should see this green light, which is great. All right, that's exactly what we want to see. You want to set it up. We're going to go PWM and direct mode. 16.8 kilohertz. CPR, we're going to have it 10,000. Now, use encoder index. We want this one, STM32 pins. G25 shifter and long XY. Now all this is um, on that same hackaday.io page. I'll post an image up of what needs to be done. But um, click save. Yes. Righto. Now you can get into start fiddling with your settings. I'll um, post a picture of sort of my preferred settings for a couple games and you can go from there but you can get your wheel centered you center the, the wheel set your degrees you want now you can then save a profile okay but you can also save it to the EEPROM so technically you can just load profiles on the fly for different games when you load them up right but if you're just playing one game continuously for for a while then you can Save your settings to the EEPROM and you technically shouldn't need this software open. You should just need your uh, discovery board powered up, your MMOS board powered up, and it should all be saved on the EEPROM. So once you turn your wheel on and you've got it connected to the MMOS, the first thing you want to know is, if, is the wheel holding still? Now it might have some sort of oscillations, sort of backwards and forwards, but if it starts to spin one way and continues to spin, 
then you need to change your PN191 from zero to one or the opposite, whichever, whichever one you have selected, do the opposite. And that should fix that problem. I had this issue where the wheel was just spinning continuously and that was the issue. So let's make sure you have that set up correctly. So since uh, starting this project and sort of opening it up to the X Simulator community, there's a few things that have been done in the meantime by the likes of Thanos. He's made a, an adapter board that will eliminate all the wiring basically and you can just plug a STM32 board, not the Discovery, it's a different board. It's still a work in progress. But the good thing about the board is it has a built-in DAC spot, so you can solder a DAC onto it, digital to analog converter. This gives you a clean signal and allows you your motor to run smooth, quiet, with no noise. Currently, one of the biggest downsides is it has a lot of noise. Well, not, it has a fair bit of noise, right? So it feels like a slight bit of sand in the, in the, in the motor. This can be counteracted by some filtering which is PN188 now the more filtering you put in the less fidelity you get in the car racing game so the good thing about the DAC is you can actually lower that right down to one have no filtering on the driver itself and have a pure analog signal and get rid of all the noise keep your fidelity it's a godsend actually but if you're just wanting a wheel to get out get get going with for the price and if you've got a discovery board laying around then it's it's more than adequate i'm i'm loving it more than my g27 it's a lot more torque a lot more spring it's even though you do get a bit of noise you kind of get used to it so i'm kind of looking forward to, i have a test board on its way from thanos so in the next week or two i'll do a review on the differences it makes and just how much smoother it is and compare the two and but yeah I, I if you've want to get into a direct drive wheel on the cheap then by all means follow this tutorial and have some fun and then once thanos has perfected his uh, adapter board then look at getting one of them um, the only downside other than that would be some would say the resolution of the encoder it's only a 2500 ppr which is 10,000 CPR in uh, semi cube terms that's very low but um, yeah I'm not too sure if uh, a 10,000 PPR 40,000 CPR encoder would work um, the manual doesn't really say whether it will or not but um, it's it's on the to-do list of projects in the future so we'll see if it if it can work and if it does work see what difference it makes but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and like and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. Alternatively, you can head over to X Simulator where I've posted a thread based on this project and there's been a bit of interest and it's quite active and it's going to be interesting to see where it finishes up. Um, you can follow the progress there or the Hacker Day initial post or you can even just check out my own build thread and see how my rig came to be. Um, alternatively, there's the Thanos Discord, which is quite um, busy these days. It's got a lot of sections, a lot of information, and X Simulator also has its own um, Discord as well. Not quite as active, but um, yeah, that's no, some good information there, and you can get some help pretty instantly these days rather than waiting for someone to read your post and reply. So, yeah, that's no, a good tool. I highly rate it and I think you should join up if you need some help. Alright, cheers. Bye.